This is the logistic regression module and an overview of logistic regression. Logistic regression is applied to designs with a single dichotomous outcome variable, regardless of the number or scale of measurement of the predictors. We won't discuss the extensions of logistic regression to outcomes with more than two categories. There are lots of similarities between modeling dichotomous and continuous outcomes, certainly more similarities than differences. This introduction will be organized around describing those similarities and differences. Details about specifically how to perform a logistic regression are covered in other modules. When comparing continuous and dichotomous outcomes, the terminology is somewhat different. Everything with a dichotomous outcome is called logistic regression. No one refers to things as logistic analysis of variance, logistic analysis of covariance. The nuances of creating dichotomous outcomes are covered elsewhere. Just as the t-test is a special case of the analysis of variance, which in turn is a special case of multi-predictor regression modeling for continuous outcomes, a simple chi-square test is a special case of logistic regression. So it turns out you don't have to choose between these two techniques, so they're conceptually equivalent. Logistic regression has the advantage of being easier to generalize to the case of multiple predictors. The logistic regression model takes the functional form shown on this slide. We'll define the logic later. For now, what's important to recognize is it's simply a formula that transforms one number, the probability that an event will occur, into another number, the logit of that probability. Because there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between probabilities and logits, using the logit as an outcome, it's nothing more than an indirect way of modeling the probability that the event in question will occur. Applying the rules for transforming odds into probabilities yields this expression for the probability that it will occur. You don't have to remember the formula. I'll make the calculation for you. To produce a logistic regression, R will create the same data array you're used to dealing with for continuous outcomes. In particular, categorical predictors are transformed into indicator variables. One of the differences between continuous and dichotomous outcomes is that in logistic regression, there's no assumption that the error terms of the model are normal, because there are only two possible values for the outcome. The fact that there are only two possible out outcomes complicates the visualization step as well, since the scatter plot of predictors versus outcomes would look so ugly. In a plot of y, x versus y, only two values of y would appear. Other modules will describe how to work around this problem. When fitting a logistic regression model, we do something that's technically different but conceptually equivalent to selecting the set of parameters that maximizes the model sum of squares. There's no harm in thinking about things in terms of model sum of squares and error sum of squares, so long as you recognize that this isn't literally true. Another difference between continuous and dichotomous outcomes is that in logistic regression, the model fitting procedure doesn't always work. Sometimes R will give up on trying to fit a logistic regression model and instead provide you with a cryptic error message. What this error message is trying to tell you is that usually is that the cell sizes are too small, which in turn is usually caused by having too many predictors that are too highly correlated. In logistic regression, confidence intervals are based on the distribution of regression coefficients being normal on the logit scale. Accordingly, for a 95% confidence interval, you take the usual beta plus or minus 1.96 standard errors. As discussed elsewhere, if you take e to the power of beta, you obtain an odds ratio. The confidence interval for the odds ratio is obtained by exponentiating all the points within the original confidence interval. The standard theory behind logistic regression assumes that the sample size is moderate to large and that there is a reasonable number of events. Get help if any of these assumptions it seems questionable. In logistic regression, everything you've learned about analysis basing analysis strategy and comparing the fits and nested series and sets of models still applies. The comparison between models use something that's conceptually equivalent to a partial F test. The only difference is that you use a different distribution. In other words, for logistic regression, you'll compare full and reduced models not with F tests, but with chi square tests. The inputs to these tests aren't model sum of squares, but something called minus 2 log likelihood statistics. But the idea is the same. The minus 2 log likelihood statistics quantify the fits in the models. The bigger the difference in fit between the full and reduced models, the more the parameter in question matters, the more likely it is to be declared statistically significant. 
Everything we've covered about model validation applies with equal force to logistic regression, since almost nothing of it depends on the scale of measurement of the outcome variable. Details are covered in another module. Propensity scoring is becoming an increasingly popular alternative to, re to, logis to regression in ENCOVA as a method for adjusting for imbalances, particularly for observational data. We consider propensity scoring as a separate module within logistic regression because, log because logistic regression is one of the key steps in propensity scoring. 